This is Diver Whoopee Kid Davey Did It by user Nick Says Henlo. Make sure to like and subscribe for more content like this. This is a message from the author, a little disclaimer. This LLB takes place after the long haul movie. Also, this goes without saying, but this is not canon to the Diver Whoopee Kid universe. This LLB is a satire of mockery of YouTubers such as Minilad and, and Kiwis who have actually groomed minors. Hope you enjoy the LLB. August, Wednesday. I'm going to be honest, becoming an internet sensation was both a blessing and a curse for me. On one hand, you're famous and recognized everywhere, but on the other hand, you're constantly being recognized and stopped by people asking for selfies. Can we take a selfie, Greg? Go away. Although, the diaper hands meme did die down a lot these past two months, so the amount of people stopping me for selfies and other stuff dropped significantly, which is good. Maybe being famous isn't all that fun. Anyways, today I headed down to Rowley's house to play some Twisted Wizard with him as I usually do when I go there. And he just had to open up some closed wounds. <laughs> hey there, diaper hands. I was annoyed at first, but I laughed it off and I went to the house. I went into Rowley's room and we kicked it playing Twisted Wizard and we got bored of playing after a few hours. So we decided to watch Digby on YouTube, but we saw a video that took us by surprise. Oh, this can't be good. Me and Rowley were both flabbergasted. What exactly did Digby even do? There was only one way to find out. Hey guys, it's me, Digby. If you haven't already heard, there's been some recent allegations about me regarding me messaging an underage girl inappropriately. I want to state that this did happen and I want to take full accountability for my actions. Here's a rundown of what happened. A while back, a fan messaged me saying how she liked watching my videos. I usually get messages like these, so of course I thanked her for and did my whole THAT'S HOW DIGBY DO IT thing, but she kept on talking to me, even getting deep and personal conversations about herself, saying how she was suicidal and depressed. I, of course, talked to her and comforted her because it hurts to see someone so distraught in life. I added her on Discord so we could chat whenever she needed someone to talk to, since she told me she didn't really have any friends to vent to. I won't be naming this girl. A few months of talking to me later, I really felt like we had good chemistry together. She flirted with me constantly, saying I was cute and hot and stuff. I've never had a girl call me those things before, so it made me excited to talk to her each day. She eventually asked if she could date me and I said yes. Later I found out that she lied about her age. She initially said that she was 19, but it turned out she was 17. I was going to break up with her, but she said that she would take her own life if she did, so I stayed. At that point, I kept flirting with her in fear that she would do something drastic. Thankfully, she didn't to my knowledge, but I'm pissed. She backed me into a corner and manipulated me for internet clout. I didn't want to be inappropriate with a minor, but at the same time, this is someone's life we're talking about, so I kept doing it. Eventually, she cut me off and made a twit longer talking about how I groomed her. This is not true. She also included some Discord screenshots of me allegedly saying all of those gross things to her, which, again, I did not do. I have severe depression sometimes, so for her to do this makes living all the worse. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry for getting heated, guys. It's just, it sucks to wake up to a lot of kill yourselves comments and uh, tell memes about these allegations about me when I'm completely innocent. I would never do such a thing to a minor. It's just gross. I'm going to look into hiring a lawyer to look into everything so my reputation won't be completely shattered. But for now, I'll be taking a mental health break to process everything that went down. A anyways, that's all. Leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed. Dig me out. Me and Rally were absolutely shook. Did this alleged victim really manipulate Digby to doing those things? Or is Digby lying out of his butt? He did mention that his victim made a twit longer about him. So I went onto Twitter to look for this twit longer. Upon opening Twitter, I noticed that Digby was trending with 20k tweets. I went through a lot of tweets shaming on Digby until I eventually found the twit longer made by Digby's alleged victim. Trigger warning, I was groomed by Digby. TLDR, Digby groomed me was in a horrible mental state. My home life is nothing but abuse each day. My only escape was Digby's videos. Each time he said his goofy catchphrase, I would always get a nice dopamine boost in the moment. His videos are fun to watch. I went out of my way to message him personally and he thanked me. I continued to get to know him because we had a lot in common. Then out of nowhere, he asked me how old I was. I told him the truth and I told him I was 15. After I told him, I thought nothing of it and neither did him at first glance. Boy, was I wrong.
As we talked more and more, he kept subtly flirting with me, and it made me feel really uncomfortable. I let it slide though, because I took it him as being nice to me. But then, he would say things like, if only you were 18, and you're pretty cute for a 15 year old lol. I told him to stop, and for a brief moment, he did, and then just yesterday, he sent me a shirtless picture of himself at the beach with a caption, I need to trim my chest pubes LMAO. I will admit, I laughed my ass off at this, because it was a mixture of feeling uncomfortable and hysterical, so I blocked him and deleted any and everything related to him and his channel. He mentioned that he was bipolar and has very severe depression at times, but it does not excuse talking to minors like that. I'm going to speak to my school counselor about this. I genuinely feel sick to my fucking stomach, and it makes me wonder if he's done this before. I certainly hope not. Seeing the victim's testimony really raised some questions. For one, Digby said the victim was 17 when the victim is allegedly 15 in reality. And two, the victim claims that he started flirting while Digby claims that she started flirting with him. As for the Discord screenshots Digby mentioned, I'm not going to draw what I read and saw because just the thought of Digby doing the things he allegedly said he would do is pretty gross. I asked Riley what he thought about this whole thing. Digby would never do such a horrible thing. I'm not going to draw any conclusions yet since innocent until proven guilty. After all, those messages could be fake. Thursday. I've been thinking a lot about Digby and the allegations that surfaced about him. My whole YouTube page is just filled with bottom of the barrel commentary YouTubers talking about the allegations. Needless to say, things aren't looking good for Digby. To be honest, I really hope these allegations aren't true. I mean, I literally met the guy. He gave diaper hands more publicity when I went to that gaming convention. Ugh. After dinner, I sat on my couch and watched the news. It was the same old, same old, until a story came up that I was not expecting at all. I instantly called up Rowley. Rowley, Rowley, Digby's on the news. He got arrested. Apparently, the con- Apparently, the FBI confiscated his hard drives from his computer and his phone, so I'm assuming either the victim called the cops on him or someone purposely swatted him to bring him to justice. They have yet to check his files and stuff, but it's crazy how he got arrested. I'm still having trouble processing it. They even showed his mugshot, and I gotta say, it's actually pretty jarring in a funny way. Actually, you know what? The FBI hasn't found anything yet, so he's not guilty as of right now. I take it back. Innocent until proven guilty. Although, Digby looks like he just got arrested for possession of methamphetamine rather than grooming. I heard Rowley laughing his butt off once he saw the mugshot. <laughs> Anyways, I hung up and went to sleep. Being hysterical really made me tired. I'm very invested in this whole Digby fiasco though. Friday. I woke up today expecting more news about Digby, but so far, there's been no updates. People on Twitter have been clowning on him and memeing about his mugshot though. Glad others find humor out of this whole thing despite it being pretty taboo. I wonder when authorities will conclude their investigation. I went into the kitchen to grab some breakfast, but when I saw mom, she looked incredibly concerned. She almost ran up to me and hugged me as she looked at me and asked me something. Greg, are you okay? Did Digby do anything to you? I reassured mom that Digby didn't do anything inappropriate with me, and she told me to tell her, stay safe. After that, I took a seat and ate some waffles while telling mom more context about the Digby situation. I told her that the claims were just allegations and that he's being investigated at the moment. So the claims could be false, but they could be true. I then went to my room to just chill and scroll through Twitter when I noticed I had 20 plus notifications. Apparently, people have been tweeting at me asking if I was gonna come out about Digby since he was the one that pretty much gave me a boost in my diaper hands persona. I thought about it for a second and decided that adding my two cents to this whole thing would give me more recognition. So I recorded myself. I basically told everyone that Digby never grew me or did anything inappropriate or weird with me. I also said that everyone should wait for evidence against him to come out before drawing any conclusions because, once again, innocent until proven guilty. I uploaded the video to my Twitter account and went back to scrolling. That was when all hell broke loose. Wait, what? What was it that I said? Why are people calling me a pedo defender? All I said was that people shouldn't draw conclusions this early because Digby might be innocent. I didn't defend his actions whatsoever. I'm a bit anxious now. What if people see me in negative light forever instead of some kid that got his hand stuck in a diaper? This can't be good. I'm gonna take a nap to calm down. Well, I overslept and it's 4 p.m. now. Great. Oh yeah, my Twitter feed is just filled to the brim with death threats and pedo defender accusations. Fantastic. I genuinely hope this blows over because this is getting way out of hand. Saturday. 
You have got to be kidding me. Yep, I'm getting canceled on Twitter just for being an intellectual. God help me. Just then, Rowley called me. He told me that someone had doxed my home address on Twitter and apparently posted a picture from the front of my house along with it. Ah, fuck. I went ahead to report the tweet, but I noticed something. The username. It was called Bubby Retard 6969 That means my little brother Manny was behind the account, so I went to confront him. But of course, the little psychopath gave me the same excuse. I'm only three. I snitched. I know, snitches get stitches and all that, but he literally doxed our house. I don't care anymore. I told mom what Manny did, and she didn't know what doxing was, so I'd explain what it meant. She, of course, didn't believe me because he's only three. Give me a break. But then she grounded me, which meant I couldn't use my phone for the next two weeks, which also meant that I couldn't defend myself or report any other doxing that happens. I'm getting so sick of Manny being let off scot-free for every little thing he does. It's complete bullshit. So needless to say, I lost my shit at mom over this. Mom always sides with Manny on everything. But this is the one thing that cannot be brushed under the rug. Our safety is at risk because of Manny. Mom said that Manny didn't do it and that he's too young to know how to do something like that. But I remind her that we are talking about the same three-year-old that someone managed to change my net critter's password and, more recently, spoke fluent Spanish that got us out of the whole road trip fiasco. But then I said something that was a bit harsh. Fuck you, Mom. You're a horrible parent and you suck. I'm sick of you. 